For Afghans desperate to flee, everything is about to change. Is the moment now upon us when the world goes from getting them out to keeping them out? Emergency airlifts give way to border walls and checkpoints. But still, they will try. They will come just like oceans. They will leave the country. At the end of last month, three and a half million people had been forced to leave their homes. Some left the country before the Taliban took control, some in the international evacuations. Many now are attempting to leave on foot. By land, most migrants either cut through Pakistan to avoid Iranian checkpoints, along a route known as the Golden Crescent, favored also by drug smugglers, or they take the chance and cross directly into Iran. From there, many make their way to Turkey, but their ultimate destination is often Western Europe. The city of Van in Turkey, just across the Iranian border, it's a popular stop along the way. Here, an Afghan family of six is considering their next move. They saw the end coming and left Afghanistan in the months before their country collapsed. The day they spoke to us, their hometown of Kunduz had fallen under Taliban control. The reason they've asked not to be identified isn't because they fear the Taliban, but because they're terrified of being arrested in Turkey. They say it's already happened once, when they first crossed the border. People smuggling is a growth industry and the meltdown in Afghanistan will amount to a colossal stimulus package. This 20-year-old is one of its entrepreneurs. Here he is in van, flitting from one vendor to the next in search of bus tickets for his clients. The family of refugees from Kunduz. He himself is also a refugee turned people smuggler. <laughs> As a foot soldier, he stands to make around 347 pounds a month. Most of the money, he says, goes to his bosses. He's saving all he earns to eventually get himself to Germany. His is a highly illegal profession, and it is fraught with risks. In dingy safe houses like this one in Istanbul, migrants hide out until it's time to move to the next location. Those who are arrested are supposed to be put on buses back to Afghanistan. Although it's hard to know how that would work now that the Taliban is in charge. Obviously, I'm trying to go to Europe to continue my education, to do something for my future. In Turkey, I'm not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to, to do as I am, was medical student. Now I'm nothing here. For the migrants, are master jugglers of fear. Fear of being forced back to a home that is no longer safe versus fear of being arrested on the road to somewhere. They are the true citizens of nowhere pawns in a geopolitical game. <laughs> Turkey found itself at the center stage of that game after the 2015 refugee crisis. Its leaders have already said that this time it will not act as an EU warehouse for Afghan refugees. 
the family from Kunduz has only one dream left. And so they wait at the water's edge, dreaming of a European coastline. But this isn't the sea, it is a lake, Lake Van, and it's just their next of many obstacles. Migrants cross it to avoid checkpoints and often they pay the ultimate price. 61 drowned, trying to do just that in 2020.